Hey everyone, I just wanted to hop on here and make a quick video. I'm uh, wanting to answer a uh, fellow GDevelop game developer's question and uh, see uh, if I can offer any assistance for you. So the uh, the question was uh, essentially how to make the sides of the board like a wall so that enemies cannot pass through. And uh, in this case, I have something that works for me. And what I found with uh, GDevelop is that there's a large community that contributes a lot of extensions, and so there are probably uh, dozens of different ways to approach this. Uh, but I will show you what I have done, and hopefully it's helpful for you. Here is a, a quick sample. If you've been following along at all, you know this is just a uh, tower defense game, but here are some of the bare bones. So when I click my button, my enemies will spawn at the top, and they're going to come down toward this target. And so they're coming from a spawn point that is fixed and it's up here above the top border and they head down to the target following a path. Uh, how are they following that path? Well, they're following not a fixed path. Uh, there's an uh, element called tweening and they're not using that. Uh, instead, if I go to my layers here at the bottom, click up here at the top, you can navigate to your layers. I have an enemy barrier layer and I'll, I'll reveal that to you. It's the secret sauce here. Uh, all these are, are basic sprites, uh, and they happen to look like squares, but that's just because they're fancy. This, these could just be any old sprite. And uh, they have a barrier behavior. So if I go to that sprite right here, it shows behaviors. And I have the pathfinding obstacle behavior uh, toggled. And it is an impassable obstacle. So there are some options you can play around with in there to where the enemies might be able to, say, break through. But in this case, uh, that's not something I'm interested in. So it's impassable. I, all I do is click apply. And so while that is anywhere in the scene, uh, it, then I go over to the enemy that I'm spawning, make sure that it also has pathfinding right here. So I'm using pathfinding for its actual movement. And because pathfinding is linked to that pathfinding obstacle behavior, um, those gray blocks are going to barricade these enemies. So you can see now my spawn point is right up here at the top. Let me zoom in for you. It's just a little point. If I say move that over here, now the enemies will not take this path. They will have to go down and through here. They, now they won't necessarily make like this L zigzag shape. They're going to take the shortest path possible, which is going to be some sort of a down, diagonal, and then over. And that's okay with me for now. But here's what that looks like wave coming down going around these obstacles over to the target and so what that means is you can uh, change the shapes drag them around whatever now I think if you try to do a diagonal it's going to give you this big old uh, rectangle but uh, you can move them around and if you need them on your borders just put them on the borders and it, like for any reason you want to do that you now have a solid wall you know, you can extend these. In this case, I used a, uh, a repeatable sprite. And so, uh, you know, you can use these to your advantage. So now if I just place this flat right here in the front, you're going to see they're going to go find some other path to go around, like, say, to the bottom or to the top. See what that looks like real quick. Okay, so they're going to go to the bottom, but they have to go around whatever barrier is right here. Down. There you go. Boom. So there's that. And again, that's just one possible approach for you. But let me also give you a little more. Uh, one thing I find that's helpful is when I'm troubleshooting this to use another behavior called pathfind drawing or something like that. So let me go to the enemy, open it up, behaviors. And up at the top, it's draw pathfinding right here. And all you do is you add it in. You go to add behavior, draw pathfinding, and nothing to configure there. Apply. Then in my scene, create an action. Um, 
with no conditions. So uh, what you do is you just create an action and as you type draw and pathfinding will pop up. We pick your enemy. In this case, it's that object. And then I use shape painter. So all you need to plug in is draw pathfinding, pick your enemy, and in this case, shape painter, okay. Now when I, let me un disable this. Now, whenever the enemies uh, are moving, you're going to see their intended path. So it's kind of uh, helpful for troubleshooting where they're moving and how they're moving. And it can help you decide where to put your barriers. One other option you might have for the border, if you're talking about the border around your actual game, depending on what you're trying to achieve, you could also utilize a tool such as uh, when you're trying to delete items that leave your screen. Uh, when I first started here, I thought I needed to come in here. Let me take off my uh, webcam. Uh, I thought I needed to go in here and um, manually tell it, okay, when you leave the left side of the screen, you know, which is, you know, X negative, in this case, uh, 25, or the right side of X equals 1400, delete the bullets. Uh, instead, you can see I've toggled disabled those. Instead of manually deleting items outside of the screen, just go into your actual object. In this case, it was a bullet. Go to behaviors and add destroy outside. And it will automatically destroy whatever is uh, outside of the screen. And you get to add padding if you want. So here's the documentation for that. But you get to add padding. In this case, I gave it a margin of, say, 100. And that's just so that uh, the moment it leaves the screen, half of it isn't still in frame. And then you see it just vanish. You want it to completely exit and then uh, to be deleted. So that's helpful, too. And you might be able to use that for enemies. You know, like I said, there are other options out there, but that's what I use. And hopefully that's helpful for you. So um, I appreciate the uh, question and good luck with your project. Uh, sounds like you're also making a tower defense game. So uh, feel free to update us on that and have a good one.